why. I was just playing the banjo. You know, it's funny, I, I practice a lot. It turns out I'm just not very good at it. Kind of like the Bombers and football. For those who may not be familiar with uh, the culture of the CFL, would you be able to describe how much the Banjo Bowl means to the Bombers and the Rough Riders and just the people of these provinces as well? Yeah, I think the perfect word is, is culture. It, it's not just what goes on uh, on the field. Uh, a lot of it actually is what happens off the field, leading up to the game, of course, starting with the week before the Labor Day Classic and then uh, ending with the, with the Banjo Bowl the following week. So it's how the fans interact with each other. Uh, the short distance between Winnipeg and Regina and how fans you know, rent buses and travel back and forth and party and all those things. Of course, the game uh, is the most important thing, but there are so many things that lead up to the game that allow uh, that banjo bowl to be just uh, such in the fabric of the fans in Winnipeg and, of course, also Regina. Wait, having played in the game itself, would you be able to describe the atmosphere compared to other CFL games you played in? Yeah, it's it, 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 it second to maybe on the Labor Day Classic, and it may be catching it one day, but that atmosphere is, is absolutely, uh, it, it, it's energy. It's energy uh, from the two days leading up to the game till the day after the game. That's how much energy uh, that's moving around in the city, not only on the field, but just in the city, all the, the festivities, the activities, everything that's going on. Uh, it just provides so much energy. That's the one game where, you say to yourself, you don't want to be injured. You don't want to be on the sideline uh, uh, for that game. You want to be on the field because you know it's going uh, to be a special game uh, with everything leading up to it. So uh, it's I miss about football. I don't actually miss playing football, but the atmosphere, the Labor Day Classic, and this banjo bowl brought, it's, it's something else. There's nothing else like it. It's a drug that you can't get anywhere else. You can't put a price tag on it. Uh, because it's something that's embedded in you, and you wish you could just get one more taste of it. So uh, I always tell young players, don't take these type of games for granted, because when it's gone, it's gone, and you can't get it back. So enjoy it. Uh, enjoy the moment as much as you can. Do you ever have a, a most memorable moment or a favorite moment from playing in the game that you tell players? You know what? It, 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 it's not the, the first or second game. I think it was my last game in 2008, because the first few years, you know, the hype hadn't built up yet. 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, it started building up. But 2008, there, there was a really a lot of hype around it. Uh, you know, the fans started understanding what this meant uh, to everyone around it. And it was just that atmosphere. It wasn't nothing particular in the game. I don't think I had that great of a game. But it was just the entire atmosphere. The, the day before the game where all the fans got to come out and get autographs from all the the players and everything. Those are the things uh, that I remember the most. It's not any particular moment or anything like that, any particular play or touchdown or anything like that. It was just the atmosphere that last year that I got to play in, in 2008 and, and the hype, how it started building up and uh, the fans. And we had a sold-out crowd. I think we had over 30,000 uh, for that for that game, like 32, 33,000. That's what I remember more than anything. Hey, Bubba, who's going to win the banjo ball? Riders? Or the Bombers? How have you kind of seen those um, smaller towns kind of thrive through this game? Oh, it, it, it's such a build-up. As you, as you talked about, those smaller markets, uh, they, they, they plan out and look so forward uh, to these things. It's almost like a holiday. I know the games are on the weekend, but people are talking about them. Uh, from the especially from the Labor Day Classic on to uh, when the Banjo Bowl is over, it's all about the rival, but it's also about also the fans coming together and and enjoying themselves. What does uh, the Banjo Bowl as a whole mean to you? Uh, for me, it's a it's a game I look forward to the most in the in the regular season. Outside of playoffs, it's it's kind of the biggest game that that you look forward to, and it's really fun, festive atmosphere. 
Uh, so it's a chance to see people dressed in costumes and making fun of people in vagina. So they'll, you know, wear like fake teeth that are all yellowed and broken, you know, um, the whole banjo picking in breaths, right? So mm -hmm. people wear costumes to, to that. What makes the Banjo Bowl such a u unique event in football? Well, I mean, there are rivalries in the in the Canadian Football League. Uh, Calgary and Edmonton have one, Toronto and Hamilton have one. But I think the one that's most special is the one between Winnipeg and Saskatchewan. And that rivalry, you know, predates the Banjo Bowl. I mean, uh, it's a prairie rivalry that's gone on for decades. And it was usually accentuated, you know, it hit its peak with the Labor Day Classic. You know, uh, always on Sunday and always in Regina um, just the day before Labor Day. And that is a tradition that was, you know, firmly embedded long before the Banjo Bowl that got established. But just a lot of intensity, a lot of drama between the two teams. And you could always uh, feel that rivalry, regardless of who was playing, whether it was players that had been there for a long time or ones that were even new to the league, they quickly picked up on it. How have you seen just, like, the notoriety, I guess, surrounding the game and the popularity since Troy Westwood dropped the infamous line and then apology. I think it took a, a little while to set in, even though they had established the tradition of the Labor Day rematch, which is what we used to call it the, the following week after they had met on the on the Labor Day weekend Sunday. Um, but I, it, it really has. And I think um, I think Winnipeg uh, getting better after, you know, a number of years, you know, in uh, with Grey Cup drought, I think helped stoke it as well. In the last couple of years, um, you could sense the animosity a little bit more as uh, as the Bombers became stronger and became the favorites. And I think they're, you know, I think they're riding a winning streak as well. I think they won three straight now, and they dominated in 2022. So um, I think Winnipeg's improvement as an organization has really helped. I think the intensity was always there uh, with Saskatchewan fans, win or lose, no matter what the record is. There is such an, a a passionate fan base, but I think the Bomber fan base has really intensified with Winnipeg becoming such a good team. Hi, I'm Darren Bombing. Three out of four Ryder fans coming to Winnipeg Sunday will attend the Banjo Bowl. You'll find the fourth outside Investors Group Field breaking into cars with Manitoba plates. Behind the Banjo is a public service of TSN 1290, the home of Blue Bomber Game Day. The Labor Day Classic is kind of the premier rivalry in the CFL. How do you think the, the Banjo Bowl can compare to that? And do you think it will ever surpass the Labor Day Classic as the premier rivalry in the CFL? I think it's an interesting question. And I think it's, it's, it's becoming harder and harder uh, for one to surpass the other now because the Banjo Bowl has grown so much in popularity, it's like part two, it's like the second half, it's like a single entity. The way I see it now too, that you know, if Saskatchewan wins at home in uh, on the Labor Day game, then part two is coming up in Winnipeg, the second half. So I, I, it's almost like a two game series, even though they would beat other times in the season, um, I almost see those two games as a whole. So um, it, you know, uh, home and away. I mean, it's a uh, it's it's a classic. It's it's the great home and home series, really. Labor Day, Banjo Bowl. What what do you think makes the Banjo Bowl so special to the fans of the CFL, and why do you think it has become such an important event on the CFL calendar every year? Well, I think rivalries matter uh, because emotions run a little higher, and I don't even mean that in a bad way. Although sometimes it's. Sometimes we've seen it, that it gets pretty intense on the field between the two. There's no love lost. Um, but I think, uh, you know, rivalries create interest. And and it's deep-rooted, too. It's not just born like a, a few years ago. This goes back decades between these two cities, between these two provinces. Um, and um, we've seen this in sports, that in terms of fan interest, in terms of fan passion, rivalries do matter. Do you think that the origin of this tradition could exist in today's society? I think it would. I think it could, but it's not easily established. The tradition, and this is why it's it's a great question because um, we see upstart leagues like the XFL or the USFL, for example. And and I remember even hearing these little rumors. If you you know what was it a couple just a couple of years ago when the XFL was going to relaunch that maybe they'll merge with the Canadian Football League. And I could never for the life of me understand how that was going to make it better for the CFL. I just I just couldn't, especially if it involved rule changes. Um, because what I was thinking of with the CFL is 
they have tradition on their side. This has been going on for a long, long time, um, years, decades. And the, the XFL has no tradition. So when you look at these markets, and, and good for you if you can name every XFL team right now, um, but it's going to be years if they make it for years. It's going to take a long, long time before rivalries are established. So I think they can. I think it can happen, but the league has to stick around. And the CFL, for all its problems, has stuck around. It's endured. And, and the result is something that's not, you can't cultivate this immediately. You can't. It takes time. And, they, and, and, and these two organizations have invested a lot of time in this league, as have um, Edmonton and Calgary for theirs, and Toronto and Hamilton for theirs, which is an, it's still an outstanding rivalry. Um, you know, it had some bumps along the way, but it's still, you know, the CFL with nine teams has three really good rivalries, in my opinion, that have stood, you know, uh, for a long, long time. And I, I think, could you establish one now? You could, but we wouldn't know for several years to come. I don't think you just create a rivalry instantly. So what does the Banjo Bowl mean to the fans? Uh, well, I think it's become Winnipeg's uh, signature game. You know, every team um, likes to promote its home opener, and of course you want a playoff game. Uh, but, you know, you'd like to have other games during the course of the season that jump out for, you know, marketing reasons, but just games that people want to go to. And this is the one now that everybody circles on their calendar to go to. Um, it's the one game that consistently sells out every year. And it's just, uh, you know, it's kind of the Labor Day game is represents the last week of, of summer. This is sort of one last splash too, before the temperature starts to turn and then people get out and it's, it's just a real party atmosphere. There's lots of people at tailgate even more than a regular game. And it's just, uh, it's become, yeah, the signature game on the bomber schedule. And you know what? There's a lot of moments on the field that, that pop out to me, but more than anything, it's it's the atmosphere. It it's um there's a, you know every game's going to have its five or six uh, you know highlight of the night kind of candidate plays. Right. But, um, for for the for someone that's covered the team for so long, it's just nice to be in the building and have it hopping and have it full. And there's just a, a buzz for this one that is only rivaled by a playoff game. And, and I think that's what makes it special more than any particular moment or game. So how do you think each fan base feels about the name? It's still kind of sensitive to some people in Saskatchewan. Uh, I know that uh, there's some people in the media and uh, one of their former coaches that wouldn't even refer to it as the Banjo Bowl. They wouldn't call it that because they found it so offensive. Troy West would never meant it to be that way. At least that's what he says. Um, and he said, you know, fans in Yorkton, Saskatchewan, he got invited out well after he had retired to go be on a parade float and wave to people. And he signs, um, you know, People will ask him for his autograph that are Ryder fans just because they like to bug him about. I think that it might have been really sensitive at the beginning, but over time, I think people have recognized it in Saskatchewan, especially for what it is. It's just our answer to the to the Labor Day Classic, and it's supposed to be good natured. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot that separates you know fans in Manitoba from fans in Saskatchewan. Uh, you know, we're it's both two prairie provinces, both, you know, farming communities and all that kind of stuff. So I don't think, uh, I think the people that over time that were offended by it maybe have softened a bit in Saskatchewan, but I know, I know it still rankles quite a few there. So I, I think everybody in Winnipeg obviously loves it. <laughs> Who would want to live in a semi-frozen, mosquito-infested backwater like Winnipeg? You stink! And the stench is beginning to rub off on your loser pig poo bombers! Maybe your football team will leave town too after the Rough Riders kick your butt! CFL, the rivalry lives on.